Hey, welcome back to another episode of Greg Tech New Horizons. This is, I fear, in game that is uh, Apex Predator, formerly known. No, seriously, though, I kind of wanted to show off my little farm uh, breeding station that I have going because it's actually getting somewhere decent now. I have some steel leaf franks that I can start to breed up right here. I have Got spider nip going for a while now. Fear stalks, you've already known about live roots now. I'm gonna breed something with this god of thunder seed. I haven't decided what's gonna go here yet. Here I'm trying to get the glow flower, um, but inevitably I just keep getting the same things. Then we've got our red wheat, which I actually just got this. Uh, something crossbreeded, two things crossbreed, and got a red wheat. And when I Use the spade on it. I got two seeds. Also, an update on seed oil. Uh, we've got 28 of them now. We're just waiting on another 26, but they are starting to flow in here. And then, of course, the upgrades. You saw me take down the uh, big steel multi block. Uh, much rather have this massive super tank for oxygen. I did end up taking a bunch of the machines down. I still need to remove him. And replace them over here in our LV wall, which I'm not sure how much longer I want to keep this either. And I reconfigured this coal setup too. Uh, beforehand, I only had the liquid and coal uh, automated from many episodes ago. Well, I took the iron tank out from under here, replaced it with the super tank. And also automated the export of coal coat. So everything is pretty much automated as long as I keep this stocked with coal. Now one thing I really needed was more gallium so that I could start making a lot of uh, gallium arsenide. Because I want to be able to make these diodes as the payoff is incredibly efficient. A whole stack from just one recipe. I ran into two issues. Not enough gallium, we're about to solve that right now. And platinum wire, which I'll elaborate on that in a little bit. I placed a miner down at a sulfur vein in the nether and got a bunch of sphalerite ore. So what I found out is if you thermal centrifuge sphalerite ore and then run it to a pulverizer HV so you can get the byproduct, there is a 10% chance at a whole dust rather than spending two dust and only getting a 25 percent chance of a tiny pile but i also realized you can do both so we load it up now while we wait on that to thermal centrifuge down uh, i can explain the platinum problem so the deal is you have to go through this stupid process to convert powder to nuggets to ingots so on and so forth but in order to smelt the platinum metallic powder dust in the blast furnace what we have to do is upgrade our coil block because it requires 2041k and right now we're only capable of 1800 so i think what i'm going to do is just install the canthal first later on we'll get to nichrome um but in order to do canthal I have to use mica now. I can no longer use the alumino silicate. Uh, so I did go out and find a mica vein. It took me, I'm not going to tell you how long. And I can now go ahead and process all of the mica we need in order to create these canthal coil blocks. So let me do some math. Okay, that equates out to 
two stacks of canthal that we need. So let's go ahead and make that dust. Oh, that's going to take a long time. So what we'll do is start working with the Mika so we can get our Mika foil, whatever it's called. I just had to look ahead a little bit to see if I was being maybe overly ambitious, and I absolutely am, because the vacuum freezer won't even unlock until you have both the clean room and workstations done, and that's really upsetting. Alright, well I finally might have figured out the kink and also added some travel anchors so I don't have to keep using that stupid ladder over there anymore. Um, but down here is just a below our, actually let me show you. The clean room is directly below here, our HV area. I have a travel anchor at the main center of our underground section and I can just use that to teleport. She is Climbing in efficiency, which is okay because we don't necessarily need to use it at the moment. And I even have a little door. I can come back here and make sure everything is fueled and running smoothly. I have no way to get back inside. Oh, I had to break the door and it completely restarted the efficiency over. That's tragic. Well, I'll tell you what was even more tragic was the fact that I built this clean room on a chunk border and so I came back down here actually needing to use it at some point and it wasn't running. So I moved it over some which is incredibly annoying. Like I said earlier these things take so long to break for no reason. But I have lubricant set up, I have a chest with circuit parts and all that jazz, a little storage drawer for some resistors, the white ones I literally just got from a quest. That's one of the, this is the main reason I'm doing all of this is so that I can make these white diodes a little bit easier. Now in my spare time, I've also started to craft um, everything I need to make an industrial sieve or sifting machine. But what we need at the moment is a power gen source. So I'm about to go steal a combustion generator from the EBF and replace its setup with an HV combustion generator. So what we're going to do here is find a way to disconnect all of these from the fuel supply. Okay, now I can drain each and every one of you, add you to my collection. Now, figure out this puzzle. So the transformer needs to go here, and then that means the generator goes right here. So let's take one pipe this way you are stepping down four amps output okay always verify now if everything's done correctly and i type this correctly and i turn this on it'll work and hopefully not ever run out i don't think it will because i tested this in a creative world but i think this will be very nice because it will allow me to utilize all these other generators. So we'll just keep our eye on this and see if it'll make all the rest of these stainless. I don't think I'm going to run out of diesel for a long time. I am running, have run out of oil, so I might fix that in a little off recording session. But now the mission is to get this bad boy set up. And I purposefully waited to do this so that I could record it. Um, we're going to go ahead and put this generator right here. Make sure it's facing the proper direction. North, north, okay. And you get fueled. Very nice. And now I have to actually assemble the big thing. Um, 
So let's see how badly I jacked this up. Coming together nicely. Now I just gotta figure out where this muffler goes. I'm not really sure where exactly that's supposed to output. Maybe on a side? I could do it on the side right here. Does it say formed? Oh, it did form. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so now what we need to do is repair its hatch and drill a hole out so that this doesn't completely pollute my base. I put iron bars on this. It looks kind of tacky. I feel like if I were to put that somehow over there, I don't know. Maybe one of you can suggest something to me. Let's fix our problems. Should be everything. Running fine. Oh, this is going to be so exciting. Let's um, go ahead and purify a bunch of ores and give her a test run. Oh yes, the test candidates are almost ready. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to do this. I really want to run all stacks through, but I'm going to do one stack first. I might have to whack it for it to start. Yes, you do need to be waxed. <laughs> How quick is the operation? Six seconds for every eight ore. That is absolutely phenomenal. Look how quickly we're getting coal. This is, this is great. Um, the only not so great thing is I should probably upgrade one of these output hatches for when I'm processing coal. Unless it will dump to the next output hatch. That would be fine with me. I didn't even think about the fact that this is per perfect access to my whole uh, coal coke setup. Alright, here's the true test. Did it switch? Yes! Cool, it's not going to void immediately. It will go to the next available output hatch. Wonderful. That means I can process all of you right now. That is so much faster than the sifting machines. That is incredible. Five hundred and twelve coal within two minutes. Well, since I took you guys to the construction of the sifter, I feel like it's not necessary to do this chemical reactor, but I will explain it. I have the input bus for program circuits. This uh, specific LCR is going to be for polyethylene slash ethylene. Uh, I'll explain that in a second. Then I have a fluid input hatch from our oxygen super tank. A fluid input hatch for the ethanol and a fluid input hatch that I can manually put sulfuric acid into and we're gonna try this sucker out and see just how well it works so we'll grab some sulfuric acid and if everything goes well I might have to turn this machine on but we have this four let's cut her on and I'm hoping it sends it to this hatch. I don't want it to go to the other hatch. This is an LV hatch, and this is an MV hatch, and I want all the polyethylene to go to the MV hatch. But let's, let's test it and see if it'll actually put it where I want. Please tell me you're going to output to this hatch. No, and I forgot I'm going to need another hatch for the diluted. So, let's rearrange this and add another hatch. Okay, I might have found a solution now. Successfully locked that fluid to molten polyethylene, nice. So, come to find out, uh, through the help of the Discord, you have to shift right click it to lock it, and then you right click the hatch with the cell that you want to lock it to. So, 
with that being said everything should start to auto output to where it belongs that already went up so that's good i have a super tank buffer for that and you have ethylene because yes that's right i was testing but yes we have molten polyethylene now and i need to watch it because it can only go up to 64 no 32 so i might want to make a uh, fluid solidifier with a chest right here at some point but for temporary processing this will do just fine slowly but surely things are coming along uh, this is actually the second batch of workstations that I've made now. I, so I have five. Uh, I can show you what I did with the others if anybody wants to take a wild guess. Our vacuum freezer is done. I was not going to waste the time recording all the materials used to make this, which is actually relatively cheap. It's just a lot of aluminum, but it is done. We have canthal being processed, which was one of the main goals of this episode. So I have some hot ingots here, and I have not put them in and tested this freezer yet, so let's do that. And burn to death. Oh, you need to be turned on, don't you? Oh, you have a power button. Everything seems to be working fine. We have canthal. I also had to rearrange our sifter, as I noticed it was not working earlier, and that was because it was split between these two chunks. So it is now pushed over into its own little chunk, and it will run nice and happily for a long time. Look what I can finally make! If I'm smart, I'll put all of these in the HV assembler. Much faster, I like that rate a lot better. Haha, <laughs> you look so naked. Let me fix that. Now, in theory... Let's take this out because I have stockpiled 603 platinum dust just through smart refining of nickel primarily. You get a one and you start working, please. Oh, what's next? What's the thing I'm missing? Oh, I didn't turn it on. <laughs> 15 seconds, we start getting platinum nuggets. We're in it to win it. Boom, boom. The moment I've been waiting for for hours and hours and hours from this episode. But we've done it. Well, I think that's enough brain boggling for this episode. Um, we've spent quite the amount of time upgrading the EBF, adding the vacuum freezer, even uh, installing our first large chemical reactor. And we can't forget about this guy either. This is one of my most proud accomplishments of the episode because I can sift things so much faster now. But yes, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, if you watched all the way through the end, like I always say, thank you very much. Your support does not go unnoticed. This channel is growing more and more every day and I cannot thank you guys enough for it. Uh, on a side note, I am going to have to... Um, delay the next episode by just a week or two as i'm going to be moving across the country but as soon as i get everything set up i will be cranking out some videos so thank you guys for tuning in and y'all be be easy